hopefully in this video I will finish the inlay off. Um, there's quite a lot of work to do, but uh, not as much work as might have originally happened had I gone with the original plan. I, I asked for your opinions and opinions I got and I think the one thing that came from that is I'm not going to cut corners by putting circular pearl dots. Um, I suppose dots are circular. Um, <laughs> the dot inlay is much easier um, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to do full inlay but what I decided to do is simplify the other pieces. Originally I was going to go for these two piece inlays with the bar through the middle right the way up the fretboard. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to use a... Um, I'm going to basically get rid of the bar in the middle and just join the two pieces together which will make for a much simpler inlay. I am going to use the method I used in the previous video of uh, cutting around the template rather than the actual inlay pieces. Um, it, that may create a little bit of extra work but I think it will give me real accuracy and I can, um, I can use the, the method to make sure that the, the, the thing is, is centred properly and is the correct um, orientation. Um, I think it will just go so much better like that. So, uh, better crack on with it. I almost ruined that piece. You can see how wayward I was with the second cut because the template was sliding around. Uh, it's, it, it just wasn't adhering. I don't know whether you can see how stringy the adhesive is. If I get another piece and try to peel the thing, can you see how it's, the adhesive is very, very stringy and sticky? That is not healthy masking tape. Ugh. Um, this is a piece of, this is a brand new piece of masking tape, freshly purchased today. Um, <laughs> this was, this is the following day af after that previous shot. This, this is some new masking tape and you can see it's far less stringy. I hope that comes across on camera. Um, this seems to be far better behaved. I think the masking tape I used on that first batch of abalone was past its useful life. It was quite warm in here, but I don't think it was the heat that was causing the problem. I think it was something to do with maybe stale masking tape. So unfortunately, I've got to redo all that gluing, um, <laughs> which means I'm going to be running low on templates. I'll have to get some more printed out. But we'll, uh, we'll use some fresh masking tape and give it another go. In the eagle-eyed view we'll have spotted that I've increased the size of the inlay very slightly. It really was rather small. Um, it's still smaller than the 7th fret inlay but uh, I think this will just be a little bit easier to work with.
I mentioned previously, but I'm using Pegas metal cutting uh, blades number zero. Pegasus blades.
I am so relieved to have got that over with. Um, that, that sounds a little negative, but uh, there's a lot of work gone into this, this uh, inlay. Um, those last six pieces, probably, I, I think that that's about 12 hours work. Um, hopefully I'm going to keep my weekly posting schedule going. Um, but uh, yeah, be because of that, uh, I need to... Uh, I need to get a video out and I'm, I'm not going to be sanding this in this video. <laughs> that will have to be for a later video. So to see the final finished fretboard inlay, um, it will be in one or two videos time. I haven't actually glued the logo into the headstock, which is like, I think something I will do in the same video. Um, now that I've, I've got the hang of this um, using epoxy with ebony dust. I'm going to use a similar thing with the logo of epoxy and uh, laburnum dust and used two different mixtures of epoxy, a light one, a light, the light um, sapwood dust and the dark heartwood dust and try and do it. I originally was going to use super glue for the logo in the headstock but I think that's fraught with difficulty because any squeeze out will immediately stop you being able to fill the gaps. So I think I'm going to use the epoxy method with the headstock. Um, but we'll we'll do that in a forthcoming video, and I'll I'll um, sand this down, and you'll be able to see the properly finished uh, <laughs> fretboard. So I'm kind of teasing this out a little bit, but hey, um, if you're worried about the fact that I took 12 hours just to put six pieces of inlay in, plus the four or five hours for for the seventh fret, and the um, I don't know six or seven hours for the for the main logo is that I don't think I'm exaggerating these these things videoing all of this setting the camera angles up pausing positioning the camera it does add significantly to the time it probably doubles it um, I could probably have done these inlays in just an hour each um, for, for the simple ones um, so I could probably have got this all done in maybe six hours the last one I didn't film um, well, you, you you saw me put the epoxy on, um, but you didn't see me doing the cutout of the very last one, um, the 19th fret. Um, that one, I, I did that in under an hour, apart from the cutting out of the, the abalone. So I did that in under an hour, and some of that was the, the fact I was starting to get used to it and I was speeding up a little bit. Um, I think I did it in about 50 minutes. But a lot of that was that I didn't have the camera there, so the camera wasn't getting in the way. I has, wasn't having to set each shot up. Um, I could just focus on what I was doing and it goes a lot quicker. So don't worry that you're gonna have to spend 12 hours, well, um, 30 hours maybe in laying your fretboard. You should be able to do it a lot quicker than that. Um, but yeah. So to see the final version, forthcoming video, uh, hit like, subscribe so you don't miss that uh, forthcoming video. Um, leave all your comments as usual. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.